Welcome back, or if you're new to the show, welcome. Uh, today I'm going to do a tool handle because I have this nice little carbide rod which I need to make into a burnishing tool to pull up a burr on scrapers and whatnot. And I don't have a handle for it. Now I've made a few handles before and the order of process wasn't always obvious to me. I thought I'd do a video on making a tool handle from scratch. That's what we're going to do. Now it doesn't matter what size the tool handle is. It can either be a small one like this or it can be a huge one like this. The order of process is exactly the same. Now the first thing I need to do is to drill a hole in the end to accept this. I don't know how thick this is. Four, three, five. Well, that's a nice awkward size, isn't it? I reckon if I go with a four, I don't think I've got a four and a half. Okay, I don't have a four and a half millimeter drill bit, so I'm gonna go with a four and um, there should be enough give in the wood to be able to put that in, hopefully. Now, because I'm going to use this as a bit of skew chisel practice, I'm going to go. I'm going to use my matched friction drive centers. This will mean that I can use a skew, and if I get catches and stuff like that, it'll just spin in its mount. If you've never tried it, it takes a lot of the fear out of using the skew away, which is really good. Right, there we are down to round. This is a piece of ash, a little off cut that I had left over. This is why you should never throw anything away that's bigger than about an inch. Well, that's my kind of thoughts anyway. That's down to round. Now, the next thing we need to do is to make the end for the ferrule. Once you've got that mounted, then you can shape the rest from there. Now, these are some little ferrules that I bought off of eBay, I think. Uh, you can use anything for this. You can even use some brass nuts and turn them down to round once they're on or some use some copper pipe. But I got these, so I'm going to use them anyway. So we need to know the internal diameter. Well, we don't need to know what the number is. We just need to set it. So let's set it on the calipers and then we can use this to transfer it over to there. You'll notice also on this ferrule that it's got a chamfer on one side and not the other. So this end is the end that goes onto the wood first. Okay, now the nice thing about these matched drive centers is that you can turn the uh, you can turn the piece around really really easily and you'll know it's going to be true still as you can see I've turned it around so the ferrules now on this end uh, so I can work this way with the skew because I feel a lot more comfortable doing that
just marking out roughly where I want the end of the handle to be and then the narrow piece in the middle. I like this. I like this handle a lot and it feels like it's about the right sort of shape. I'd use it but it has a massive split in it and it's an old one. So we're going to try a new one. Because it's a tool handle, I'd really like it to be nice and uh, silky. So I think a really good, a really fine sand, I think, is really useful. It's worth remembering that as a species, we are actually, we are tool makers by design by evolution, I should say. And nothing feels better than making something you need. You know, you can go and buy all these things, I know, but it's absolutely nowhere near as satisfying as making what you need, working out a design, which I know this is simple stuff, but to a lot of people, this would be completely beyond them. And we're very lucky as makers to be able to do this stuff. But if you haven't done it before, it's there's no bravery involved. It's just getting on with it, making lots of mistakes, realizing they don't matter, and giving yourself something as a present, really. Because when you do this, and it's whether you make this for yourself or anybody else, what you're giving them is time. And when you give somebody your time or something your time to give to somebody, that's the most precious thing I think that anybody can give anybody, is their time. You know, when you're, if you're uh, a wealthy person, you might buy, buy people's time, by build, buying in builders' time if they want to, you know, you want something made, going and buying something made off the shelf, or if you want to really push the boat out, buying something bespoke. But what you're buying is that person's time. Okay, and the materials, but essentially, it's their time and their skill. So making something from you, for yourself, small that this is, is incredibly satisfying and fulfills some sort of primal need, I think. 
So get out into the workshop or whatever space you have and make something for yourself. No matter what it is or how good it comes out or any of those things. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? Ash is good for handles because it has a lot of absorption of shock. Now I don't need that really particularly on this piece, but I had a bit left over and a lot of my other tools that I've made are also out. So it matches. Right, let's part this off and fit the carbide bar in the end. I'm going to need some epoxy in this. I ended up finding a five millimetre bit and I used that instead, which means it's a little bit loose. But no matter. So if you can pull up a bear with a burnisher like this, then this the, the lifetime of this chisel is now infinitely more than it was because I can just pull up a bear in a couple of seconds. I don't know if you can see the edge of that, you probably can't. A bit of light, a bit of light on it. If I go over to the sharp uh, to the sharpening stones and the grinder all the time, this will be gone in no time if I use it a lot. There we go. There's a selection of tool handles that I've made, all slightly weird shapes, some of them because I was learning and this is where I started. And as I got better, I was coming this way. Um, and these are some lovely old files of my dad's where the handles had all cracked and gone. So it's kind of nice to be able to resurrect them again. So thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you're not already. It'd be love to have, lovely to have you aboard doing a video a week covering all sorts of different wood turning topics uh, and following my journey through the wonderful hobby. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.